Welcome to the Creative Mastermind Show, a weekly show dedicated to empowering artists. Every week, we search for the best habits and mindsets so you can use them in your art career. Today, on the show, we're talking about self-confidence and why it's so important to art and how to build it no matter where you are on your journey. There's lots of gold nuggets in this one, so make sure if you're not already, take some notes and I'll catch you guys at the end. Three, two, one, let's go. It's podcast time. Podcast it certainly engage. is. One thing that I think that this community really could benefit from is self-confidence because I believe that everything you do, every action stems from your level of self-esteem. Whether you have some or you don't, I feel that that comes through in all your behaviors, even in your painting itself, from the confidence of the brush strokes or your approach and what you do in your art career, like going after galleries, going after opportunities, it all stems from self-esteem. So if you don't have any, then I think it's just going to be very difficult road. Well, it's not only that you don't have any, I think it's just a skill that you grow. It's something that, I mean, of course, some people are more comfortable with, with themselves from the, from the get go. And some people have to work on it, but essentially it's, it's one of the, uh, keys to actually make it as an artist. You have to believe in yourself. You have to step forward. You have to approach people. You have to be open to critique. Um, so that's, that's kind of a, an important thing. Do you guys think it's something that develops naturally? Or do you think people need to foster it themselves? I think both. I think some people, uh, like me, I'm lucky enough where I feel like I'm born with it. But I've seen a lot of uh, examples of people that develop it. And the way they do it is through small actions and small goals that they stick to. And then through small actions, they gain the confidence that they accomplished it. And they grow and grow to have bigger and bigger actions that they commit to. And through that, they gain a lot of confidence and they they become very, very, very self-confident. Because ultimately the problem with self-confidence is that an artist who is not self-confident is afraid of a consequence. But at the end of the day, how bad a consequence can be. For example, if you're an artist and you're afraid to show your art on a social media, just as an example, because you feel like your career will end there. No, it's just, you know, in worst case, you won't, be as this art piece is not going to be as appreciated as your next one, but you never know you should share. And, uh, if you know, if it's a good piece, it's a good piece. And if not, it's okay. You'll do another one. So that's one thing. Another thing is, uh, for professional artists to approach a gallery, to approach a museum, to approach a curator, it's okay. You know, the worst thing is they will just not reply to you. They will just ignore you. It's not going to end your career. Maybe it's going to look, maybe you think it might make you look bad, but the worst thing that you could do to yourself is just not to try. So yeah, because uh, failure and rejection is a very normal part of any successful person's life in any field. So getting rejected and ignored is par for the course. It's not a problem and doesn't reflect badly on you. Exactly. In fact, it might reflect worse on you if you are avoiding that and you're trying to avoid uh, all things that make you scared so you don't do it. That probably reflects worse on you than if you tried and got rejected. Also, I think if you avoid getting rejected, it almost uh, reinforces um, this kind of like lack of believing in yourself because you, you only have like, say you, you went out once and you got rejected, which is like, probably the case for most everything right like the first time you try something if it's got some kind of like good reward to it it's probably going to have an immediate rejection in front of it and if you just quit there um there's a pretty high chance that you're just going to rerun it in your mind you know it's kind of like you run the risk of isolation and just like repeating like the same mental movie you start overthinking it you start making excuses and I think that's really the enemy for a lot of endeavors that you'd ever want to undertake in life. So to combat that, what would you suggest that they do? Um, I know for me, um, I, I don't think I was the most confident growing up, 
but uh, one thing that did give me confidence in my life was my artistic improvement or pursuit. And the only reason why I improved so much at that and was not really afraid of failing and uh, as a result gained confidence was just because I liked it too much. Like I was so obsessed with looking at painting, looking at art, the goal, I was so fixated on it that I didn't care that I was sucking. Like the self-confidence wasn't really a factor in it. I absolutely agree with Jordan. I think that the most important thing is tr tr truly loving what you do, being honest with yourself and getting better and better. And just because someone who maybe had authority, such as someone like a teacher, or if you co submitted your art for a competition, didn't get in or whatever, maybe it's just not the right crowd to judge you. It doesn't mean that your art is bad. It doesn't mean that you are not good enough. So yeah, that's, that's a great point. So it seems that the takeaway here is that you got to be more in love with the victory than with the fear of the loss. So you got to want the good outcome more than you don't want the bad outcome. And then it just becomes easy because you love what you do. Yeah. And, uh, and, when that's, it, and that's a great base too. Yeah. That's a great place to get started. So what do you guys think a person with low confidence? I, I found that. For people with low confidence, they can't take on a big, big, big goal right away, usually. So what I've um, seen helps is for them to take on smaller goals at first. What do you guys think about that? I think that it's realistically asking yourself how bad can be the worst consequence. So I think that's the first thing, you know, just not to be con confident about... Uh, I don't know, approaching the gallery. Well, look, they, they could just... So you're suggesting they should go for the big goals right away or... No, I'm saying that to actually be honest with themselves and say how bad is the worst consequence that there there, there is, you know, because yes, there, there of course, some of the goals can be bigger than others, but at the same time, sometimes, you know, when you're not confident enough, you feel like the goal that I'm trying to to achieve here is way bigger than my capability. But it might be. The thing is, for some people, they may be starting in such a low place that for them to do something that's seemingly fairly normal and par for the course for us, it could be very difficult for them. So they might literally not be able to put themselves out there enough. So in that case, I think it would help for them to start with small, small goals that build habits and then over a long time, they can expect more out of themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's so specific, right? Because each thing has almost like a different barrier to entry. But I think almost in any case, like just throwing yourself in there, right? Like head first, even if you don't think you can do it or like you feel low confidence about it, like the reality is most people perform much lower than they're capable of doing. Absolutely. So yeah, if, if you throw the person in their head first, they're going to probably bumble a lot, but they're going to probably get enough things right on intuition, right? And they're going to keep showing up. And as well as like, if you throw yourself into thing like art, you know, there's a community here, right? Mm -hmm. Of people who are supportive, people who will actually encourage you. And I think that's also another big thing to consider is like how you as a person, when you get self-confidence or even before you have it, how you can help other people out, mm -hmm. right? Just like if someone's hopping into a community and starting out, you know, I think a lot of people might kind of look at them and think, oh, you know, they're not worth my time whatever, because, you know, people have their own goals. And that I think that's so wrong because, you know, just like a small few words can pick someone up. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, so first of all, we, we discussed the passion about what you're, what you love doing. So for example, if you're, if you're a young person and you want to uh, become an artist, you want to be, become a better artist, um, it's okay to approach uh, people who are more experienced. It's okay to go to drawing sessions and actually look at how others who are better than you are drawing. And, and try new things that you're not good at yes. as well. And accept failure because mm. there is no learning without failing. Yeah, and you can do that because you love the process and you love the goal that you're reaching for more than you hate the failure and the funny part is like when you reach out to these people like you're like oh they're so busy they don't they don't care they're so famous like why would they want to respond to me right actually they're usually more than likely they want like want to respond they're excited and i know like uh with people who are below me like when they message me i'm actually pretty excited if they express like genuine interest and they you know want to know something 
I'm always so happy to help because it kind of reminds you of where you came from. I agree with you, Jordan. I think that uh, uh, people with with less of experience or someone, especially students who are very excited about learning and uh, someone who will approach me, you know, during a drawing session, I'm more than happy to share my knowledge. No consequence. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's that's kind of one of the things about our community is that at the end of the day, you know, it's it's it is a a place of sharing knowledge and it's it's a place where people are more than happy to to help yeah. because you know it's for kind of a greater good to get you know yeah start. and uh, also it probably pays to remember that your fellow artists are also struggling with uh, similar things so if you feel like your art is terrible you're so bad at this and everybody else is amazing and perfect that's probably a mental bias that's not true uh probably everybody's struggling with things and they're struggling with their self-confidence too to some level so don't feel alone in that yeah it's i think it's it comes from comparing yourself to what you think you should be right like the expectations of what you think others have of you Mm -hmm. and when you're when you make this uh thing this construct that you are trying to measure up to and you know that maybe you can't right now you just stop yourself from going out you put pressure on yourself but yeah. if you don't put pressure on yourself to be this thing and you just kind of focus on being there and having fun it's almost like the factor of self-confidence just take care takes care of itself i actually so i actually watched this really interesting documentary on netflix recently uh and it's uh, it talks about social media and the structure of social of social media and one of the things that was very interesting is that uh, there was a study that was made based on uh, social media platforms and uh, they said that Instagram is actually out of most social media platforms is one that creates the biggest amount of anxiety for a lot of people. Mm. You know, for example, young girls, they'll compare themselves to these models and they will feel like they're not good enough. And I think, I mean, maybe not to the same extent, but often you know with artists you could always look at someone who's like producing this amazing work you know and they're just like getting all these likes and, and they're 19 and they're 19 or maybe not but uh but one of the things that i think is important to remember is that social media is ultimately just a show and it's it's fake and you can't kind of build an image of somebody's success based only on their posts on instagram because you know for instance we don't know what was there before in their lives. We actually know nothing about them. Yeah. We only know what they want to show. And some people just show best of the best. And also, we all know how... Everyone. Well, yeah. And also, a lot of the things... You know, social media is much more complex than just putting a picture out there. So, I find that building your self-confidence just by comparing numbers on social media is just the wrong thing to do. Uh, you know, just believe in yourself. Just do it. Just go for it. Uh, connect. I mean, use social media to your advantage. Connect with people. Write to people. Uh, meet artists who inspire you. Talk to people. So, so social media is a great way to kind of see where people are at and to see what the standard of today is. But it's a terrible place to get hit in your self confidence with. So be careful with that and don't feel bad if other people are ahead of you. Just realize they had more time to practice so use other people's great results as inspiration for yours yeah also i think an important distinction we can make uh is not having an ego or maybe making the distinction of uh having belief in yourself versus having a big ego right because they kind of act similar on the surface like someone who's got like ego is like you know i'm the shit and they want to do everything that reinforces it but it's not based on true self-confidence it's almost like a front right it's like a costume uh, uh, I actually, I I wouldn't warn somebody from having a big ego front because at the level of not having confidence, I think putting on a front would be a great start to building a real self of confidence, Uh, fake it till you make it type of thing. So I'd rather see somebody who doesn't believe in themselves put on a self-confidence show because I think that will develop into something real later on. It depends where it's coming from. Right. Because you, I guess you could use it in two ways. You could say, yeah, I'm going to fake it till I make it. But that's almost has like a like humility aspect in it. Right. Like you're almost acknowledging that you're not there versus like the person who has a big ego and is like using that as an excuse to not come out or like using it to excuse reasons why they didn't succeed is that this person's operating on. I just a lack of wanting to be 
exposed. But I would say that the big egos that you're talking about, when I think of some examples of individuals I would consider to have a big ego, including myself, I would actually say that the big egos have helped them. Um, so I, even if they're coming from a bad competitive place, and the people that I'm thinking of, it helped them put themselves out there more. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind, like I do agree, I can think of people who have high egos, but I think it's also correlated with the high self-esteem. Th those are the people that you're referring to. I'm not, I don't know the people you're referring to exactly, but in my mind, that's who. And when I think of like big egos, low self-esteem, I don't know why, like I, I, I did some teaching with kids and like I got like little cousins and I see these kids and they have like little egos. So like they uh, walk around like they're the, the shit. And then when anything hits the fan, like they're throwing temper tantrums, like they use it like as an excuse to not come out, to not try. Like, I don't want to do this. You know, like they want to maintain this like perfect image of themselves. Yeah, I, I actually think that the uh, the real big ego that that I have encountered in my life is usually uh, it usually comes from people who are close minded and who are not willing to learn. Mm. There are there are two they're too proud of being with themselves and they're not able to receive other information and criticism. And I feel like real, real people, you know, people who have like really big kind of a uh, ego about themselves are usually people who just don't get too far anyway, you know, and, or I don't know, maybe they've accomplished something very small uh, and already, you know, they're too proud of being themselves. But the, the truth is some of the, some of the most successful people are actually some of the most humble people. That's what I've found. And, you know, I've, I've watched, I've listened to a lot of interviews with very successful artists, photographers, even politicians, you know, business people. And a lot of them are, you know, yeah, so I made it. And I know that I made it. I don't need to remind myself that I made it. So the distinction here is that a big ego that is not helpful is kind of like thinking I am important and I'm special versus a self-confidence means I believe I can do it. Absolutely. So that's the distinction Absolutely. that we need because to make. Ego is not self-confidence. Ego is, ego is blocking everybody out and putting yourself above everybody else. Uh, it's not the same as being competitive, saying that I can do this. I know I can succeed. I know that I can win. I know that my art or whatever I do is good enough to, to be above uh, above anything that's been produced, you know, this year or for this competition, but it's not the same as being like, oh, this person is not good enough to talk to me, or this person doesn't have a chance. I think, <clears throat> look, we're we're a community of artists, and we don't step on top of each other to get better. We actually encourage each other, and by encouraging each other, we push ourselves further. And it's dedication, it's passion, absolutely, but it's by no means. <clears throat> it does never come from a bad place. It always is about pushing further and working hard. Um, yeah, I actually find that in this art community, from all the people I met so far, I can't say that I've met anybody who has that bad ego that you guys mentioned. I think everybody's coming from a good place, and I've seen a lot more people that actually make great work. This is great work that they should be pitching to a gallery or they should be sending to a big competitions but they're too humble is in my experience, most people actually could use a bit more ego. I, I've yet to meet one person, one artist but that's they full can, themselves. They can be talented and uh, lack self-confidence. Yeah, you I know, think, if you I just think... have enough time in front of the easel, like you're going to get good, but you, you might still lack major self-confidence. Yeah. It's not as much of an ego. I think what you're referring to is actually self-confidence where they would say, you know, I know exactly what you mean. And, and I've seen people, who are, uh, they're incredibly talented, but they are feeling like if I approach a gallery and say, hey, I have this portfolio, I would like to show it your gallery because our, you know, the level of uh, my expertise and the type of work that you show is is good enough. They, they feel like, oh, you know, uh, this is too imposing or whatever. It's true that, you know, in this world, you have to take action. You yeah, can't uh, just sit there and expect that some curator from uh, Guggenheim Museum will uh, call you up and be in. And we'll yeah, see. why not? You have to go and get it. Like me and Alex, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Boston. Um, I was there for some client stuff, and we thought, why not drop into 
all the galleries, uh, the top galleries there. And the first one we walked into, they sold Dali, Matisse, Picasso, Prince, Damien Hirst. So, you know, people <laughs> a little a little more popular than us, uh, you'd say. But, you know, we went in, we weren't afraid, and we had a great time. They pulled out some Rembrandts for us, and then uh, we made a, a little bit of a relationship with that gallery. And yeah, they responded honest. to our emails. And Absolutely. We are honest. We said that uh, we were, you know, we're passionate about art, and we, we told them that we were artists, uh, and we had a great dialogue with with these salesperson. And in fact, this was such a great learning experience because what we learned uh, during that uh, field trip, where we visited over ten galleries, uh, the most successful galleries were ones that were the most approachable, uh, meaning that they would respond to our emails. Uh, they would uh, not ignore us when we would talk to them. Uh, and uh, we had some great dialogues with, with people at, uh, that, that actually had some great success. Uh, and we, we've seen the opposite where, you know, you see a gallery that's clearly not doing very well. And you kind of can see why, you know, you enter the space. They're a little disorganized. They're a little, the idea of entering a gallery space I'm not saying that the salesperson should follow you, but I'm saying that a little acknowledgement of your existence would be nice. So. Yeah, I I think it's because those places have gratitude for their customers, right? They they care about their customers, right? And you feel it, and that's why they're succeeding because people want to go and know that the people have their best interests at heart, yeah. right? Because you never know who's going to come in, right? <laughs> well, exactly. And one thing I'm worried about here is that I feel like some artists could actually only feel comfortable with that with the lower examples of galleries the ones we approached that uh didn't come and take care of us and they'd be too intimidated for the really really big one uh because they just they say oh me and damien hurst uh we're not on the same level we can't uh be in the same gallery but what ends up happening if you do that is then you're only open to galleries where the salespeople aren't uh, as go-getter and aren't as good at their job. So that's my fear for people with low self-confidence. They're closing themselves out to a lot of the best of life's opportunities. Yeah. And it's just, you're putting pressure on yourself when you don't go out there, right? You're saying, oh, I have to be this before I go there. I have to do this. And again, it's, you're building yourself up to this, like yeah. s your own mental construction, right? Yeah, yeah. And actually, if you just go there and you just talk to them, like a lot of people just enjoy conversation, right? You don't have to be a superstar, you know, to be there and they'll buy into you. Yeah, because all the superstars that you may be intimidated by, they were one day not a superstar. And the way they got there is by feeling like they deserve it and by taking action. So why not consider yourself worthy right now and go and take those opportunities? And with time, you're going to grow into it and it will become real to you. Yeah. And I, something just kind of came to me right now was gratitude, actually. Yeah, I said it before, and now I'm thinking about it. And if, there, if I could think of, like, one, like, life hack, like, one quick trick to get self-confidence is I know in situations where I feel anxiety, maybe, like, social anxiety or, like, art, just anxiety over art sometimes. It's not really, it doesn't really happen that much these days. But when it does, I just kind of think about why these things are so great you know like if people are seem unapproachable or seem like too scary i don't know i just think about like why i'm lucky to be there why like i'm lucky to even be alive why i'm like lucky that i can talk and interact with these people what's so great about them you know mm -hmm. and just actually appreciate them and it's like it's almost incompatible with the idea of like not believing in yourself. It's it's one of those things that just like it short circuits it and it just goes away. So you're saying that you take a potentially stressful, pressuring situation and you turn it into a joyous event where you just enjoy life and you enjoy the challenge and the difficulty of it. Yeah, it's it's almost just thinking like, what's cool about this? What's fun about this? So before you're like, ah, oh, like, um, you know, it's going to be terrible. Everyone's going to laugh at me. Oh, no, I'm going to make the worst painting. Everyone's going to judge me. And then you think, actually, what's cool about this? No, this is amazing. I get to express my creativity on the paper and who cares what it's going to be. You know, I get to interact with these people who are, you know, want to be here with me, who are adding value. And yeah. That's actually a very good point. And I remember using a mentality sort of like that um, 
when Alex and I were filming my uh, sculpt painting video for Proco because this was my first instructional painting video to go out on a big channel. And I was actually feeling um, like, what if this painting doesn't come out or something? But then I used what you said and I thought about, oh man, if it comes out well, it's going to go out to a million people that might like it, that might get something out of it. And I remember being nervous about it, but after it was done, I got so many positive messages that it was helpful. And the messages were miles ahead of my expectation of how well I could make a video. Yeah, I think yeah. that's how human brain is designed. We always fear the scariest outcome, which is 99% yeah. times just not true. Uh, if you did something, you put your effort in, into it, you actually invested yourself, you did it passionately, you did it well. There's just no reason for, for a failure. And, you know, in worst case, Usually people will just not say anything rather than, you know, <laughs> if you did a painting, no one's going to go out there. Yeah. And they don't actually care. Yeah. yeah. Nine times out of 10, whatever new project you're afraid to do, you think you're going to be terrible because you're new at it. But nine times out of 10, you're going to do a lot better than you think. And sure, maybe it won't be like a seasoned person and in, let's say in, uh, video instruction making, but it's going to be a lot better than those nightmares that you're putting in your head. Yeah. Don't overthink things. Another just thing I just wanted to to mention about uh, social media. We talked about it earlier, and uh, I just want I I just had this thought recently where I find that you can never judge the quality of your art with the let's say amount of followers on Instagram or whatever. And the greatest example that I could think of is so National Geographic travel has. 20% of followers compared to Justin Bieber. Is it because their photos are worse? <laughs> Absolutely not. So this is just kind of like a side note. You know, there, there are many important factors. It's not, not only the picture quality that you produce. So don't judge your, your art on social media responses. You could be extremely talented and there could be a million other reasons why you just don't get the response that... Um, so you're saying to have the self-efficacy to judge your level and where you're at on your own terms by your own standards and not needing the feedback of the external world to know where you're at. Especially Instagram. And I'm, I'm talking about Instagram because it is a very uh, big tool today uh, for, for artists. And it is very, it's very easy to get this kind of a, um, wrong idea about, you know, or get you know, this kind of a self questioning and, you know, why people are not responding. People might not be responding because the algorithm of Instagram decided not to show at the rest of the world. It has nothing to do. It has absolutely nothing to do with whether it's a good picture or not a good picture. I mean, there could be two different accounts, sub, you know, um, submitting the same image and getting completely different response. So, but it's also, it doesn't, really matter if people like it what matters is how is this work an improvement over your past works if it's not an improvement then you know that you could think about that why didn't i improve on this piece but you know if you made a significant improvement and uh, you know the work is still not very successful that's okay you've made an improvement that's what you're supposed to do and you can call that a victory and you can get uh self-confidence from it that you can build on that's a great point. Yeah, I think what really gives people a great sense of self-confidence is like that gradual, big improvement, right? Like when you can look back six months ago and be like, wow, I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, now. yeah. And you can't see that. You can't see how much you've improved until you look at something you did a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you always true. feel like nothing much is happening. But then let's say you take something out from three years ago. You're going to say, wow, actually, uh, I improved quite a bit. I have my first portrait ever painted in my room and i just i like to pull it out every mm, once in a while it's a real funny. stinker yeah that's really funny. it's a self-portrait too it looks like an alien basically oh i've seen it actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, i'm just like dream. yeah okay <laughs> i'm doing all right yeah. and uh, another point i want to make is that self-confidence it's not only for your behaviors in your career like approaching galleries or submitting to competitions it actually comes through in the actual work itself, through the power of the brush strokes, the artistic decisions you make in the piece. Specifically in oil painting, I can say that the confidence 
of the the artist is very visible in their strokes. That's why we love Zorn and we love Sargent because they look like every stroke they stand behind it. And in many ways, even if it's a, in the wrong place, not their stroke, but let's say if you're making a painting and you put a bold stroke, but it's got something wrong about it, it'll probably feel nicer than a timid stroke in the right place. Um, yeah, I heard this quote. It was by the watercolor painter Joseph Zubukvik. Sorry if I'm butchering his name, but uh, he, he wrote, you can basically get away with murder as long as your brush strokes are confident. Exactly. That's why we love uh, <laughs> our master painters. Any master painter that you love, what is the one? There's many things different about them, different subject matter, different edges. But one thing that I find always connects them, they look like they stand behind their decisions and you can see it in the paint. Another thing I want to say is that oftentimes I, I notice uh, in, in art students is that uh, they start panicking too early. So let's say they start working on the portrait. It doesn't go in the right direction. They start freaking out and then they give up too soon. And I feel like it's, it's patience and self-confidence. And you should say to yourself, look, the worst thing that could happen to this painting is that it's going to be a bad painting. It's okay. You still learn because just by... Well, you're going to learn more even. What actually, if you learn more in the bad painting than the one that went well? In fact, most often we'll learn from very bad paintings that we do. And then we'll look at other people who have done good paintings. We compare. And then the next painting, we know what we should not do to get a good painting. But that being said, even, even without getting to a complete disaster, oftentimes I feel like just, you know, just disconnecting your your emotions uh for a bit and just keep on working persevering and getting it done and at some point you know at some point things start clicking clicking you're you're putting some proportions in here and there and then a few things start to make sense and then something that was not going anywhere actually ends up being a pretty okay painting yeah and that anxiety just exists in your head right like actually a lot of times you can see people panicking stressing out whatever like a thing that's not even that bad like they just kick into this like a uh, negative loop maybe from earlier in their pursuits or even like something earlier in their life and i remember when uh we were at watts and you like have this painting you just think it like sucks so bad and uh then jeff would come over and he would just do a little bit of like scumbling to like merge the values together and it just starts working it was something so simple, but like you just like you have no idea how to solve it. You're like crying. You're like, yeah. I can't fix this. But it was actually just your own narrative saying that it was a bad situation. Oh, yeah. Your mindset going into your work is so much. I remember one time I watched similar to this. I don't know. Something was wrong with my mindset that day. I don't know. Uh, I think I was trying brain neurotropics and they weren't hitting me right. I think is what was <laughs> happening. Uh, and I was painting this painting of uh, your Rome and I thought it was going terrible. And for some reason, I just started panicking, just getting emotional, just out of control. I'm, and I was like, your Rome is my favorite model to paint. I always uh, get a win on this one. Why is this going so terrible? I just started freaking out, falling apart. And it was all mindset because a few days later, I looked at it and I asked some other people and they're like, yeah, it's a very good Al Prima portrait. And I thought, yeah, what was I freaking out about? And... <laughs> Uh, this whole nightmare was all in my head. It was just in the wrong mindset. I have a different example, actually. Recently, I've I've done this painting, uh, which started as a live model session um, portrait. And uh, it was okay. It was not a greatest painting. It was not the worst painting. It was just a painting. But then I said to myself, you know, I'm kind of curious to try something very experimental with it. And I just took a direction. I let the painting kind of guide me through. And I ended up just working more and more on it. I added the background. I added some some uh, some elements of water and the sky and the tree. And of course, there there are times where I looked at it. I'm like, what did I do with my initial painting? But other times, I'm like, well, who cares? In the worst case, I'll just cover it with gesso and start something new. It actually ended up so different from my usual work, and it took a new direction. Uh, it made me think about my next series of paintings. And I think it's, see, if you just uh, panic because you're, you're out of your comfort zone, uh, because you're lacking confidence, you're not doing yourself any favor. Just, you know, take this risk sometimes. It's okay. So, yeah. That's a great example you bring up because when I think of that painting, it was such a, 
a pleasant, unique surprise to see this painting because it's like nothing you've ever made before. So it must have taken a lot of self confidence to just go and try this. Uh, yeah, I agree. I it, agree. It was a. It became very different. Like it started out with a black background, and then you gave it a whole different feel, and it got this kind of fairy tale ish narrative, and it became a much more interesting painting and it's unique like nothing else you've made uh uh it was a very pleasant to, that you took that risk so that we could see this painting thanks but i i mean i think and i'm sure you guys have experienced similar things where you're not afraid of losing a painting because that's kind of maybe what made it easier is that there's no client waiting on the other side and uh it's 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 the time that you allow yourself to actually invest yourself and you allow yourself to fail if you need to fail but at the cost of getting a, becoming a better artist because for me that's kind of like my career goal to be as good as i possibly can and so that's i think that was kind of part of it yeah no i love that story because yeah that piece just totally transformed and it felt like it was coming from a real place of like just where can I take this, right? Mm -hmm. Versus like, it, there's al you can almost do the same thing, but in a bad way. I, I'm not gonna say it's bad, but like, I think coming from a worse place where you're trying to fix a piece out of insecurity, mm -hmm. right? You're like, you know, you stop thinking almost, you go in like a rage mode and you're yeah. like, you just keep like messing it up. You can actually like ruin a whole painting like that, mm -hmm. right? And it, that's where it's not coming from a place of self-confidence. It's where it's like, you're pla placing the expectation on your artwork, saying it has to be this thing. If it's not, I got to keep fixing, got to keep fixing, got to keep fixing. I'm not saying it's wrong to have this kind of perfection, but it's like, you are coming at it from a place of, I'm confident in myself. I don't need this painting to prove who I am. So Jordan, I have a practical question for you. Uh, so when you're in a situation where you're working on a portrait or any any kind of painting and it's just not going anywhere what do you do to not fall in a, in a panic mode that's a hard question like uh, it's a complete it's a complete catastrophe uh it starts to be let's say it's a three-hour painting and an hour has gone by and the eyes just don't align and you're starting to panic what do you do i'm starting to panic i i don't think i would panic i would probably just keep going would you walk away, just take a break and come back? I, I do love to do that. Yeah. Just like, especially go outside and get some fresh air and you come back and like, actually the problems that were there, you could almost solve them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a reset, right? Like mm -hmm. you are so stuck in this thing and I don't know, maybe it's normal for people. Maybe it's not that you kind of want to prove yourself with the artwork, mm -hmm. but yeah, the second you like leave and you step back, you can have that clear headedness and say, no, I, I am okay. I'm not, I'm not represented by this painting you know are there's and you can be objective from there right you can be very clear calm and very open about it and you can say is are there things that i can fix with this or is it actually truly like beyond recovering and you could start a new one if you wanted right uh, so the more calm you are the more of a chance you have of I totally think that yeah bringing your work to the best it can be pablo do you have an example that you, you can remember from the past when you felt like you're falling in some kind of anxiety from not getting the, the painting done right. And uh, do you have a trick, like Jordan said, maybe walking away? A lot of times I start freaking out and most of the time it's over nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens. Like I was painting the wall texture on my piece called uh, Prey. And uh, it was my first time trying to layer uh, multiple textures of paint in a fetch any style mm -hmm. and i was trying to build physical texture of the paint mm -hmm. and just the fact that it was something new even though it wasn't going bad i was just freaking out like mm -hmm. just losing my mind couldn't even see that what i'm doing is actually working i can't i, I didn't come out of it i just kind of freaked out and i just painted and just emotionally unraveled then went to sleep. Then the next day, I looked at him like, "Oh, I actually built up some texture." I don't know why. It's yeah, out. yeah. I think I remember you were sending that to, to me at least. I don't know if you said it to Alex, but I remember just like looking at it. And I like I wasn't upset by it at all. And you're like, "Oh, it's not working. It's not working." I'm like, "It's okay, bro." Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, uh, unfortunately, I just kind of freak out and I don't really recover. <laughs> That's why I don't have. Um, <laughs> just have a sleep it off. I just keep working and I just feel bad while I do it. And then the next day I can kind of see it with more clear eyes. 
I'd actually, I'd love to hear an answer to this because uh, I, I don't recover I have, too much. I might have an answer to this, and this is from my personal experience. I mean, I don't know if everybody would relate to this, but and it applies specifically to realist painters, and it applies specifically for let's say a painting from life, a portrait. So, whenever I start like feeling that the portrait is not going anywhere, I. I make myself remember the fact that at the end of the day, to make a decent portrait, maybe not a masterpiece, but a decent portrait, it, a lot of it is technical understanding of proportion. It's there's so so much logic in in this, and so little emotion just to make it look good. To make it look great, absolutely, you you need that kind of mathematical precision plus some emotion. That's Reppin, that's Zorin, that's Sargent. But to get it very, very, very good looking uh, as a painting, you just need to remember, look, there are very basic rules such as transitions, such as values, such as proportions. And as long as you have this right, you're already on the safe zone. So you're saying to just rely on your foundations and kind of fall back on your training. Exactly. Fall back to the basics, so fall to speak. Fall back to the basics. And then once you establish some ground, you can, you can work around then you then you invest yourself then you put your soul and you get something more fun out of it on a slightly different topic i want to take it somewhere a little bit different um but i feel that another way that self-confidence is always tested is when you sell your work in the pricing of it and in the arrangements that you choose to make with, let's say, galleries or agents or something like that, it's a person's ability or inability to say no to a bad situation. And I found that people with low self-confidence sell their work for way cheaper than it should be compared to some people that maybe have less quality work but sell it for more. So you got to develop your confidence to get your price points to be worthy of the work yeah people can sense that right like w when they're approaching you trying to get a price from you trying to deal with you in a business sense they can sense how much you value yourself based on how much you're acting like you need it right and you you never have any power in a situation until you can walk away yeah exactly so why would you want to succumb to your kind of fears and give low-priced artworks if there's people selling their artworks for $50 million for a square of black, then why don't you value yourself enough to say that my work is valuable and um, it should be rewarded as such. And that also means that when you have an arrangement that you're making with a gallery, let's say, to negotiate the correct contract where you're not taken advantage of, and that's why at the beginning of this talk, I said that everything stems from your self-esteem and your self-confidence, hmm. from the way you make your deals, from your brush strokes, to your ability to make friends in the art world. It all rests on your foundation of your self-confidence. And that's why it's so, so important to build it over time. Yeah, holistically, like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't, you know, say that this one thing has to be everything or like my art skills have to be everything because that's where it can crumble like when you build that expectation of especially one thing and you have nothing else going for you in your life that's where it's it holds you back mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely so i think on this uh, we can uh... so in in conclusion i'd like to review some of the takeaways so we talked about how building self-confidence comes over time. And uh, I suggested starting with some small goals, accomplishing small little things, and then using your victories to build up to bigger goals. We talked about pricing and self-confidence. About understanding why it's, well, getting something that's important to you and using that kind of like as an anchor oh, for you, your confidence. Your love of the craft. Yeah, to, to just throw yourself in it, like something that you really don't care if you fail at and just kind of like use that to build up everything else around you yeah, yeah. put put your all your love and all your passion into your work and also not allow uh things such as social media to 
to put you down, not to compare oh. numbers against your, your skill. Uh, and just really put all your effort in, into in yeah. all your all your you know passion into making this one beautiful piece of art, and that's what matters. And so have and have gratitude for it too, right? Have yeah. gratitude for what you're doing, the people around you, and yourself. Yeah, you made a very good point. That was actually one of my favorite points today. Is you said in a difficult or stressful situation, instead of focusing on the negatives of it and how scary it is, to just have gratitude that you get to be alive and play this game and do this challenge. Yeah. That was a very good point. So I hope that these takeaways help you guys. If anyone is lacking self-confidence, just know that you can build it. And it's very important. It informs everything you do, not just in art, but in the relationships you make with friends, romantic relationships, anything in your life stems from the self-confidence. And we hope that these tips will help you build it. That's a wrap. Thank you again so much for tuning in today. You know we love you guys. Today's episode on confidence was packed with lots of great takeaways. So if something really resonated with you, be sure to write it down and start implementing it right away. Hey guys, it's Pavel here. I just wanted to jump in real quick and recommend a couple of books that can help you build self-confidence. My favorite book on the subject is called The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandon. It's a very short read, it's about six hours. And then we have Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. You can get both of these as an audiobook and listen to them while painting. So having said that, thank you for listening to our episodes. And if you guys are curious about us, then don't forget to follow us on Instagram at our personal Instagrams, Pavel Sokov, Jordan Jardine, and Alex Kassian. If you don't know how to spell our names, then I just recommend heading over to our website, creativemastermindshow.com, and then when you scroll down, you'll see our biographies and you'll see our websites there. So just check us out that way. Thanks, guys. Cheers. So I, I went to the Palazzo in, uh, in uh, somewhere in Italia, okay, and uh, there was this beautiful Bella woman. I approach her, I say, beautiful, uh, you want to get like underrest for me in my studio? <laughs> I make a Bella painting of you and we have a good time together. And she said, oh Gianni, you're a romantic guy. Yeah? <laughs>